Our healthcare system falls short of achieving the best outcomes for our money. If we want better healthcare, we need new strategies to ensure that patients become full partners. Patients play an essential role, making good decisions about treatment with clinicians, driving and participating in important research, and generating new ideas for improving value. But today's healthcare system often misses out on key opportunities to help patients and their clinicians partner together to achieve better health. So in February 2013, the Institute of Medicine brought together providers, researchers, patients, and advocates to explore the critical role patients can play in accelerating system-wide changes. Christine Bechtel was the chair of the planning committee for this event. It was exciting to see so many people in one place to discuss the best strategies for partnering with patients. Over two days, participants discussed strategies for partnering with patients in areas like how patients and clinicians talk to each other, research, and improving the value and quality of care. For example, research shows that better prepared patients can navigate the system more easily. So in summary, with coaching, patients can participate in effectively in treatment decisions and improve patients' outcomes, and contrary to expectation, it really doesn't lengthen office visits. Patients can't do this alone. Clinicians have an important role to play. Simple changes, like agreeing on the concerns to discuss during a patient visit, can make a big difference. But first, providers must be willing to engage with patients. Most clinicians don't do it. They just plow right into their visit. So, Mrs. Jones, you're here for your blood pressure today. You know, it looks like it's still a little bit high. Eh, I'm going to adjust your medication. I'll see you in three weeks. Is that okay? Done, right? It's a very doctor-centered sort of approach. Instead of like, what's important to you today? What are you coming into the visit with? And there's a lot of good data that that very simple act of negotiating the agenda with a patient, which doesn't take more time, getting to Sherry's point, makes a big difference in the visit. Taking advantage of new tools can help. For example, one speaker talked about the importance of using decision aids designed to help patients with certain medical conditions understand the risks and benefits of their treatment choices. Another speaker pointed to group appointments with other patients as a way for patients to learn from each other as well as their clinician. Some organizations have built a patient support core to make communication even easier. Core members attend patient appointments, share their notes after the visit, and survey patients about their experiences. One of the support core members shared the impact of her experience. And in Ella's survey, she says that she really appreciated having someone there um, to listen to her and to listen for her. And I think that that is really what I've taken away from this service, is the ability to listen first and to listen fully. Participants suggested that tools like this should become a standard part of the patient experience, available from healthcare providers everywhere. On day two, the workshop shifted its focus to innovation in research and care, areas full of opportunity. People don't want to be patients, people want to be healthy. But people who become patients need and deserve evidence that more reliably reflects their condition and that they can use to help make better decisions. And that kind of evidence only comes from participation with patients. To get that evidence, speakers pointed to the need for a continuously learning health system that learns from new research and deliberately weaves that knowledge into patient care. This system can create a virtuous cycle where researchers benefit from more patient participation and patients get the treatment and care benefits that come from better research. But for this idea to work, people need to take part. Research shows that most patients are open to sharing their data, especially when they see how it leads to better care for themselves and others. Jill Plavinsky, a research coordinator at Boston Children's, was diagnosed at age seven with IBD, a type of debilitating intestinal disorder. She spoke about programs that enable this virtuous cycle. And it's kind of unrealistic to expect our physicians to give us the personalized care we expect if we don't help them do so. I also want answers to difficult clinical questions based on facts, not just hunches. Um, with IBD, there's no one perfect treatment for everyone, and a lot of treatment decisions are made out of desperation. Uh, Improved Care Now allows doctors to really access what works for certain patients across the whole country and can, uh, can help one another make decisions based on data. 
Improving research and care are huge steps, but they're only the beginning. Once treatments exist, we still need strategies to make sure people get high quality, affordable care, the last challenge tackled by the workshop. Discussing cost and quality can be tough, especially with so little available information. That's begun to change. New initiatives are helping both patients and providers to take advantage of evidence, to have informed conversations, and make smarter choices. They're also making it clear that when it comes to healthcare, more is not necessarily better. We need better clinical judgment about what, when tests are necessary and when they're not. We have a lot of uh, pulling of triggers in healthcare now. They're protocol based and they're not really using clinical judgment. And I think last but not least for this audience, it means patient engagement and informed conversations. After two days of discussion, participants had a lot of ideas for partnering with patients. No one thought it would be easy, but the energy was high. It's essential that the culture of the system change, and that starts with more communication. We need to start talking with patients instead of to them or about them, and that's how we'll begin to change culture. When patients partner with providers in making decisions, designing research, and improving the value and quality of care, that's how we'll reach our goals even faster. There's a lot of work left to do, but that change already has begun among patients, clinicians, and many organizations like those at the workshop. What I walk away with today is hope. I'm aware of barriers, I'm aware of you know, government challenges, I'm aware of costs, but 10 years ago there wouldn't have been patients in this room. And today we have patients in this room, and we have a lot of patients in this room. If we want better health care, partnering with patients and families can make it happen. With so much work being done, and so many people behind this effort already, now is the time to take advantage and strengthen the partnership between patients and clinicians. To learn more about this effort, please visit iom.edu forward slash partnering with patients.